Section 2, but now Acts chapters 9 to 12. A chosen vessel unto me. The events in this ninth chapter of the book of Acts are of the utmost significance to believers today because when Jesus Christ reached down and saved Saul of Tarsus, he began something new. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16 This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all longsuffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. When something new begins, grace, then something old has to be replaced, the law. Israel had become lomi, not God's people Hosea 1 9, when their leaders rejected the final offers of the kingdom found in Acts 3 7. This culminated in their rejection of Stephen's preaching to the leaders of Israel, which was the one more year mentioned in the parable of the fig tree in Luke 13 verses 6 to 9. Stephen was killed 483 years after the commandment to rebuild and restore Jerusalem given in 450 BC. Acts 6 8 4. The next thing on Israel's prophetic time clock was the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation period, but that terrible time of wrath did not happen as it was preceded by the unprophesied dispensation of grace. The 70th week of Daniel was put on hold, as Israel stumbled and fell. They will remain lomi, not my people, until the rapture happens, and the body of Christ is taken to be with the Lord. Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Then the terrible seventieth week of Daniel will begin, and Israel will be suffering the time of Jacob's trouble because of her own sin. This seventieth week will be the worst week that Israel will have ever experienced in all of her existence. Saul of Tarsus gets saved. Acts 9 verses 1 to 2 And Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Acts 8 verse 3 As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Galatians 1 verse 13 For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. 1 Timothy 1 verse 13 Who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. If he found any of this way, Jews who believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew 16 verse 16, Acts 19 verse 9 and 23. Acts 9 verses 3 to 4, And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? There shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, Saul fell to the earth because of the glory of the light. Joshua 5 verse 14, And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Acts 12 verse 7, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. 
and his chains fell off from his hands. Acts 22 verse 7, And I fell unto the ground, and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Acts 26 verses 12 to 13, Whereupon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 8, And last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Revelation 21 verse 23, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Saul, Saul, God said Saul's name twice, just as he did with Moses in Exodus 3 verse 4. Exodus 3 verse 4, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Acts 9 verse 5, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Who art thou, Lord? Saul asked the name of the voice which spoke to him just as Moses did at M.T. Horeb in Exodus 3 verses 13 to 14. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. The voice identified himself as he did with Moses. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks, to go against what was right. Saul did however respond to hearing Jesus' voice. He changed his whole life to serve God his way instead of religion's way. Acts 9 verse 6, And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Saul does not hesitate, argue, or even question Jesus, because he is now his Lord. No longer does he serve the high priest in Jerusalem, nor the sect known as the Pharisees. Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. God did not tell Saul what to do with the rest of his life. He only gave him the next step to obey. Acts 9 verses 7 to 9, And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Hearing a voice, but seeing no man, Saul heard and understood the words of Christ, but the men only heard a voice. They didn't understand what Christ was saying because he wasn't revealing any aspect of the mystery to anyone but to Paul. Acts 22 verses 6 to 9 and 26 colon 13. Acts 26 verse 14, And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou? Me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he was three days without sight. Saul here was a picture of Israel being blinded for a season. See also Acts 13 verses 6 to 12 where a Jew, bar Jesus, is also blinded for a season as a type of the nation of Israel. Israel would soon be blinded in part for not accepting Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Romans 11 verse 25. Acts 9 verses 10 to 12. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for, behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. There was a certain disciple at Damascus, named Ananias. Ananias was a Jewish kingdom saint, as were the twelve apostles. He was saved under the gospel of the kingdom message. Matthew 4 verses 17 to 23 putting his hands on him, that he might receive his sight, Ananias was to lay hands on Saul to receive power to heal him from his temporary blindness. Ananias was not sent to baptize Saul, he was just told to lay his hands upon Saul so that he might receive his sight. Acts 9 verses 13 to 16 Then Ananias answered, 
Lord, I have heard by many of this man, how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem, and here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles, and kings, and the children of Israel, for I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. He is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles. Saul was uniquely chosen to be the apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 25, while Israel would now be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein was no pleasure. Hosea 8 verse 8. Was Israel now saved? No. So why is Saul being commissioned to go to the Gentiles when the Old Testament was very clear that Israel would first be saved before Israel could be a light unto the Gentiles? Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3. God was interrupting his prophetic program to the nation of Israel, and now he was beginning his mystery program with the body of Christ. But he must first save the leader for this new program of grace. The Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel notice the order. The Gentiles are mentioned first because that is to be Paul's priority as the apostle of the Gentiles. Who better to show God's grace to Israel and the world than Saul, who was the leader of the rebellion against God's kingdom church. Paul was the chief of sinners because he persecuted the church in Jerusalem, not because he was immoral, he was blameless concerning the law. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 to 16 This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. How be it for? This cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Acts 9 verses 17 to 18 And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. Did God tell Ananias that Paul would be filled with the Holy Ghost, or that he would receive his sight from him? His sight. Ananias was just doing what he had always been doing with new believers, but Paul was to be different, because he was not saved with the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom like all others had been previously. Paul retells the story two more times in the book of Acts, once in chapter 22, and another time in chapter 26, and in two of his epistles. He adds information one time, and then he leaves some out another time because he is emphasizing different aspects of his testimony at different times. And arose, and was baptized. Did God tell Ananias to baptize Paul? No. Did Paul have his sins washed away as Ananias said they would be when Paul repeated this event in his own words found in Acts 22 verse 16? No. It doesn't matter what Ananias told Paul about what would happen in Acts 22. It only matters what God told Ananias. God never said that Paul's sins would be washed away when he baptized Paul, nor was he told to baptize Paul. Ananias said and did what he had always said and did in the past because that is what he had always done. God was not going to tell Ananias any of the mystery program before he revealed it unto the apostle of the Gentiles. Paul was to receive it first, and he was to be the dispenser of all of it, not Ananias. He was a kingdom saint operating under Israel's program. Acts 9 verses 19 to 20, And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. Notice that while Ananias told Saul that he would be a witness to the Gentiles, we see him going to the Jews first in Damascus. Who would the Jews at a synagogue want to hear from more than the very one who came to rid that area of? The plague of this supposed new sect of Judaism? No one. Notice the message that he was preaching to the Jews in their synagogue. It was that Jesus is the Son of God. Paul would have to preach that to a Jew before he could explain to them about his death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Paul never preached the gospel of the kingdom. 
Notice what Paul preached on his first missionary journey. Acts 13 verses 38 to 39 Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Acts 9 verses 21 to 25 But all that heard him were amazed, and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength, and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him, but their laying await was known of Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. Proving that this is very Christ, Saul had a great knowledge of the Jewish scriptures, and he put that knowledge immediately to work for the Lord in spite of those that wished to kill him. Paul proved that Jesus was very Christ by using Old Testament scriptures to do it. That is the only way he could prove anything to a Jew. Saul spends time in Arabia where he received the gospel that he preached by the revelation of Jesus Christ. This was before he went up to Jerusalem to meet the twelve. Galatians 1 verses 11 to 18 But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was. I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion, above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not. With flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and abode with him fifteen days, and called me by his grace. No one was called by his grace as Saul was. He was the first to serve as a pattern to all who should believe hereafter. 1 Timothy 1 15 16 Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, Paul didn't immediately confer with any man, but instead went into Arabia to receive the gospel that he preached by the revelation of Jesus Christ himself, before returning to Damascus to preach in their synagogues. It does not say he went to Damascus for three years, but that he returned from Arabia to Damascus, then after three years he went up to Jerusalem to see Peter for fifteen days. Paul obviously did not tell Peter all the information that appears in his thirteen epistles, because he had not learned them all yet. It is clear that he told Peter of his conversion and his calling to preach among the Gentiles. It does not say that Saul told Peter the gospel that he preached. In fact, that is not mentioned until Acts 15 at the Jerusalem Council. Acts 9 verses 26 to 27 And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Acts 11 But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. The apostles trusted Barnabas' words, having seen all the miracles that they had seen, it did not seem improbable to them that God would save someone like Saul. Nothing is said by Barnabas to the apostles concerning Paul's future ministry to the Gentiles. Acts 9 verses 28 to 30 And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Saul makes haste out of Jerusalem. He was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. 
Paul was visiting with Peter and another apostle during his two-week stay in Jerusalem, and he was busy daily preaching to the Grecian Jews. The Grecians, these Grecian Jews led the charge against Stephen, who was also a Grecian. Paul would have many run-ins with the Jews of Greece in later chapters, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea. Saul was content to stay there, but God had much bigger plans than that for Saul, and when the Grecians came against Paul, he made haste and left. God would now send Paul far hence to the Gentile world, where he could begin his new ministry as their apostle. Acts 22 verse 18, And saw him saying unto me, Make haste, and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. Saul makes haste and is brought out of Jerusalem with the help of the disciples who brought him down to Caesarea. When Paul tells his testimony three different times in Acts, that is exactly what he is doing. He was sharing with three different audiences what happened on the road to Damascus. Paul made haste in Acts 9 because the Grecians were about to slay him and because God told him to get out of town because they would not receive his testimony. Paul was in a trance on his first trip to Jerusalem, not during one of his later visits. Acts 9 verse 31 then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, were multiplied. Then had the churches rest. Once the apostle of the Gentiles got out of the land of Israel, the churches had rest. The government and religious crowd knew how powerful Saul's testimony was and they would not rest until he was arrested and killed, where he fled the country, which he did. He made haste and departed. Here we learn that there had already been other kingdom churches established in Galilee and Samaria besides the one at Jerusalem and that they began to multiply after Saul had left the area. These churches, however, were made up only of Jews and Grecian converts to Judaism who had gotten saved later. Chapter 10 Peter and Cornelius Acts 10 verses 1 to 2 There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God alway. Caesarea the Roman capital of the region on Israel's northeastern coast. Cornelius, a centurion, a Gentile Roman soldier over 100 men. God was about to do a 180 degree change in the way he had been doing things for the past 2,500 years. The way for a Gentile in the Old Testament to be saved was to believe on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then they needed to be circumcised, and they were to keep the covenant given to Israel at Sinai. That, by definition, is what a proselyte is in the scriptures, as mentioned in Acts 2 verse 10, Jews and proselytes. A devout man, Cornelius was not a proselyte, because in spite of everything he was, and did, he was not circumcised. Cornelius was exposed to the teachings of Moses and the prophets, and because of that he sought to bless Israel, so that he would be blessed of God, which gave much alms to the people. This was in accordance with what God told Abram that a Gentile needed to do in order to be blessed by God. Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3 Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them, that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed, and pray to God alway, he would have prayed at the time devout Jews always prayed, the ninth hour. Acts 3 verse 1. Acts 10 verses 3 to 6 He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa, and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter, he lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside, he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Here we have a unique story of an angel of God appearing to a Gentile, instead of a Jew. 
God usually spoke to Israel through angels, and now a Gentile was hearing from one. The ninth hour, the hour of prayer. This was at three in the afternoon as the Jews kept time with the day beginning at 6 a.m. Acts 3 verse 1. An angel of God, not the angel of the Lord. This angel was not allowed to preach the gospel to Cornelius, but he could tell him where to find someone who would. Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. Cornelius had fulfilled the requirements of Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3 by his blessing Israel and fearing their God. Simon, whose surname is Peter. Peter was also the son of Jonas, Jonah. His father was named after the famous prophet who also had a vision concerning Gentiles while he was in Joppa. The seaside, the sea is often used symbolically to describe the Gentile nations in scripture. Revelations 13 colon 1. Peter was staying in Joppa slash Jaffa at the home of a man that killed animals, a tanner. Anyone who would touch a dead animal or person would be unclean until the evening and until they washed and changed their clothes according to the law of Moses, and yet Peter is there. Acts 10 verses 7 to 8 And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants, and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually, and when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Remember this is a Gentile that God has spoken to through an angel, and he is told to go to a Jew where he will hear the words of eternal life. Remember salvation was of the Jews, John 4 verse 22, and for a Gentile to be right with God, saved, prior to that particular time he had to be a proselyte which meant he needed to be circumcised, Cornelius was not. Acts 11 verse 3 Acts 10 verses 9 to 16 on the morrow, as they went on their journey, and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the house stopped to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry, and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. The sixth hour, this is six hours after sunrise which was noon time. He fell into a trance. God tells Peter to kill and eat from this sheet in a vision and Peter says what he has said before to the Lord, not so, Lord. Heaven opened, Genesis 4 verse 11, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Psalm 78 verse 23, though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven, Revelation 4 verse 1, after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Revelation 19 verse 11, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Common or unclean, common meant what Gentiles ate. Unclean meant it was not a part of God's peculiar diet for Israel, but God says, He has now cleansed the unclean and made it okay for him. Leviticus 5 verse 2 and 11 colon 4-47 this was done thrice, three times this was done to Peter, who also denied Jesus three times, to make a point to Peter that it was not just a passing daydream, but it was truly God speaking to him. In 1 Samuel 3, Samuel hears the Lord calling him three times, but he doesn't understand that it was God speaking to him until later. Peter would not understand this vision until later when he went to Caesarea to get the rest of the story. This vision is a lot bigger than just what foods you could or could not eat anymore. It was about reaching out to the Gentiles.
Acts 10 verses 17 to 20 Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house, and stood before the gate, and called, and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Peter doubted what the vision meant, but God was about to open the door for Gentiles to be saved apart from circumcision and the law of Moses. Peter didn't know all that was about to happen once he arrived in Caesarea, but he obeyed what he was told to do. Before Peter left, the Spirit told him to doubt nothing. Acts 10 verses 21 to 23 Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek, what is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house, and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in, and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. One that feareth God, and of a good report among all the nation of the Jews, he was a Gentile that blessed Israel as written in Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3, which was why God was able to bless this Gentile. Peter, a Jew, is told by these men that he was to come to Cornelius, a Gentile, not the other way around, that was in itself something new. To hear words of him, Peter still didn't know what God wanted him to tell Cornelius until Cornelius tells Peter everything the angel told him. Acts 10 verses 24 to 28 and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea. And Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in, and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation, but God hath shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. And fell down at his feet and worshipped him, we see here just how little Cornelius knew about the God of Israel, as he fell down at Peter's feet and worshipped him. To keep company with, Peter reminds Cornelius that he knows that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew, to keep company with someone who is a Gentile. It now became clear to Peter that God was showing him that he should not call Gentiles common or unclean, because things were changing in. God's dealings with the Gentiles. The Jew was commanded in the law of Moses to be hospitable to the strangers, Gentiles, that came in unto them, but they were not allowed to go in unto their homes. A Jew was circumcised and had strict dietary laws given to them from God, and the Gentiles did not honor them in their preparation of food, and they also ate foods which were unclean to Jews which in turn would make them unclean. There was a wall of separation set up between Jews and Gentiles ever since God separated them as a nation from among the nations during their departure from Egypt with their receiving of the law and later circumcision. The Gentiles had been given up to walk in the uncleanness of their flesh. Romans 1 verse 20 Notice when Peter goes with these Gentiles, he takes six Jewish brethren as eyewitnesses, because this would definitely get back to the Jews in Jerusalem, and they would not be happy with Peter. Acts 10 verse 29 Therefore came I unto you without gain, saying, As soon as I was sent for, I ask therefore for what intent ye have sent for me? Without gain, saying, without delay or disobedience. For what intent ye have sent for me? Peter did not as of yet know that Gentiles would be reached with the gospel. When Jesus ministered to two Gentiles earlier, they had to come to him, he did not go to them. Acts 10 verses 30 to 31 And Cornelius said, For days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3 and Acts 10 verse 3. 
A man stood before me in bright clothing, before this man was described as an angel, messenger of God. Matthew 17 verse 5, Mark 9 verse 3, Acts 10 verse 3 and Revelation 22 verse 16. Acts 10 verses 32 to 34 Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God, to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth, and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Deuteronomy 10 verse 7 From thence they journeyed unto Gudgoda, and from Gudgoda to Jotbath, a land of rivers of waters. We are all here present before God, to hear all things that are commanded. The of God, the apostles to Israel were commanded in Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20, Luke 24 verse 47 and Acts 1 verse 2. Acts 10 verse 35, But in every nation he that feareth him, and worketh righteousness, is accepted with him. Acts 13 verse 26. Acts 10 verses 36 to 43, The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee, after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews, and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree, him God raised up the third day and shewed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people, and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness, that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Notice the timeline that began after the baptism which John preached. According to the scripture, in the one in Acts 19 the baptism of John was not the same as what Paul did later on. Acts 10 verse 44 While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Here we have the first Gentile that comes to God by faith without being circumcised, just like how the Gentiles will come to Christ in the Millennial Kingdom. This makes them a sort of first fruits of kingdom saints among the Gentiles. Cornelius and his household, however, do not hear the message of trusting in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection alone for their salvation because that message has not been given to the apostle of the Gentiles as of yet. The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. The Holy Ghost also fell on those who believed the word of God on Pentecost. Acts 2 verses 1 to 4. Acts 10 verses 45 to 46. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Act 2 colon 1 dash 4. They of the circumcision which believed, the six Jewish men that Peter brought with him as witnesses. On the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, the circumcision, Jews, were astonished because Jesus promised this gift to fellow Jews after his ascension. This Gentile had not been circumcised. Luke 24 verse 49. They heard them speak with tongues, the Jew required a sign. Tongues were for a sign to Jews. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22 For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 22 Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Then answered Peter, Acts 10 verses 47 to 48, Can any man forbid water, that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. He commanded them to be baptized. Baptism was a part of Peter and the Eleven's commission, and tongues were spoken as a sign to the Jews present. 
Mark 16 verses 15 to 18. We today are baptized by the Holy Ghost into Christ's body, not with the Holy Ghost. There is a big difference, and it is brought out in Ephesians chapter 4. Chapter 11. They which were scattered abroad. Acts 11 verses 1 to 16 And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning, and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, a certain vessel descend, as it had been a great sheet, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me, upon the which when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered, and saw four. Footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house, and he shewed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Matthew 3 verse 11, Mark 1 verse 8, Luke 3 verse 16, John 1 verse 33, and Acts 1 verse 5. Acts 11 verses 17 to 18 For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I, that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace, and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Remember that this group was made up of other apostles as well, who were not too thrilled with Peter, and who were ready for a little church discipline until Peter told them the rest of the story. Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. A Gentile could have had God grant them repentance unto life under the law, but they would have had to have been circumcised and kept the law, thus becoming Jews by being a proselyte. Acts 11 verse 19 Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenis and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. They which were scattered abroad, Acts 8 verse 1. The persecution that arose about Stephen, here we see a group of Jewish believers that back in Acts chapter 8 had been dispersed due to persecution. Preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only, they were telling other Jews that Jesus was the Son of God. Acts 11 verses 20 to 21 And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Preaching the Lord Jesus, these Jews were Grecians, just like the Grecian widows in Acts 6 were also Jews. They were what was commonly referred to as Hellenized Jews. Acts 11 verses 22 to 24 Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch. Who, when he came, and had seen the grace of God, was glad, and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. And had seen the grace of God, God graciously saved many of these Greek-speaking Jews in Antioch. They sent forth Barnabas, the church in Jerusalem sent forth Barnabas to seek Saul. Barnabas was the very person who introduced the apostles to Saul in the first place in Acts 9 verses 26 to 27. 
Why was Saul sought out by Barnabas? Acts 11 verse 25 Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus, for to seek Saul. Barnabas went to Tarsus in neighboring Turkey, Asia Minor, to get Saul to tell him the news that many Jewish believers were now scattered amongst the Gentiles. He would have told him of the events concerning Peter reaching out to the Gentile named Cornelius and his household, which would have interested Paul as the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 Acts 11 verse 26 And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass, that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Antioch is where these Jewish believers in Jesus, Grecians, formed the first church established outside of Israel, and where believers were first called Christians. Acts 11 verses 27 to 30 And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and send it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Every man according to his ability, determined to send relief, this was for a struggling community of believers that had been under the kingdom program which was now not going to be ushered in until the dispensation of grace runs its course. Question, was this assembly a grace assembly? or a kingdom assembly? Wait until you read chapter 13 before trying to figure out your answer. Never just guess. Chapter 12. An apostle is killed and not replaced. Acts 12 verses 1 to 2 now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James the brother of John with the sword. Herod, this is Herod Agrippa, or Herod the fourth. He was an Edomite puppet of Rome ruling over Israel because they broke the promise they made with God at Sinai. Leviticus 26 verse 25 The king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. His purpose was to cut off the church's leadership in hopes that the believers would disband. This was the Jewish kingdom church, and it was growing at an alarming rate and was a threat to Herod because they preached that Jesus was their king. And he killed James the brother of John. With the death of James, one of the twelve apostles, we have a major dilemma for Israel's kingdom program. One of its twelve apostles are dead, so there is no way that Matthew 19 verse 28 can now be fulfilled in their lifetime because one of the promised twelve judges that were to sit on twelve thrones to judge Israel was now dead. Paul did not take James or Judas' place. Two whole chapters were devoted to Stephen, who was not an apostle, while James who was an apostle gets only these two verses spoken about his death, because of what Stephen's death signified. James' death would help the remaining apostles to better understand what God was about to do concern the apostle Paul and his ministry to the Gentiles and to help them see how that God was setting aside the nation of Israel for the time being in order to usher in the dispensation of grace. Herod saw that by killing an apostle the Jews would be pleased with him, so he thought then that by killing their ringleader that that would make him even more popular. The early chapters of the book of Acts is about the diminishing of the nation of Israel, and the later chapters are about the apostle of the Gentiles going to the Gentiles in spite of Israel. Acts 12 verses 3 to 4 And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. For quaternions of soldiers, sixteen men. He saw that it pleased the Jews, the Jews were often King Herod's enemy, but now they would help him in a common cause to get rid of the sect that proclaimed Jesus as their king instead of Herod or Caesar. Then were the days of unleavened bread, the days of unleavened bread happen right after Passover. These were Jewish holidays that coincided with a pagan holiday to honor Ishtar, or Easter, and the spring equinox. Acts 5 Intending after Easter to bring him forth, Easter did not begin as a holiday of the early church to celebrate the resurrection of their Savior. It had long been a pagan holiday. 
How did this pagan Edomite king celebrate Easter? By killing an apostle to Israel. How many times have you seen the words unleavened bread used in the book of Acts so far? 2. These are days, feasts, on Israel's religious calendars that help Bible students figure out when different events in the Bible took place. Acts 12 verses 5 to 12 Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord, and they went out and passed on through one street, and forth with the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Prayer was made without ceasing by the church unto God for him, Peter may have thought that he was next to die after James had been killed, as he was bound up in prison. Jesus had previously prophesied that Peter would suffer martyrdom for his faith in Christ back in John 21 verse 18, but prayers were made by these kingdom saints and God heard their prayers and answered them. The angel of the Lord came upon him. Angels were often involved in answering Israel's prayers. Daniel 10 verse 12 a light shined in the prison, oftentimes in scriptures the presence of a shining light precedes a message or angelic appearance. Acts 7 verse 30 After Acts 28 God no longer operated the same way he did before with Israel and the little flock, as Israel had fallen, and the body of Christ became God's only channel of salvation for the world with the new dispensation of grace ushered in. Acts 12 verses 13 to 17 And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go shew these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. It is his angel. While Peter had an angel as an apostle of the circumcision, you do not today. You have the Holy Spirit living inside you and you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Israel under the law did not have eternal security, they had to endure unto the end, which is one of the reasons they had angels aiding them. Matthew 18 verse 10 You are not Israel under the law, you are the body of Christ under grace. Romans 6 verses 13 to 14 KJV Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Ephesians 4 verse 30 KJV And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Go shew these things unto James, and to the brethren, this James was not the same James that had been killed by Herod at the beginning of the chapter. It was the Lord's half-brother, see Matthew 10 verse 3, who became Peter's pastor, and the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. It is easy to see that the believers in Jesus were still in hiding because of all the persecution, but the twelve apostles to the Jews remained because they knew they were to continue to reach out to the circumcision. 
This was also the time that Paul came to bring relief to the believers in Jerusalem, and it explains why he did not meet with the apostles this time, because they were all in hiding. Acts 12 verses 18 to 24 Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers, what was become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him, and found him not, he examined the keepers, and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea, and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with one accord to him, and, having made Blastus the king's chamberlain their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied. The angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. This is not happening today because this happened when Israel still had an advantage over Gentiles during their diminishing that took place in the book of Acts. Barnabas and Saul were taking a love offering to Jerusalem to help the saints that were suffering from the great dearth that was mentioned at the end of chapter 11 which had affected the whole earth. Remember that for the believers in Jerusalem the dearth would be even greater because they had already sold all that they had and coupled with the fact that they were now being persecuted because of their faith there. If they were open with their faith they would be disowned from their family, fired from their job, and if they happened to be self-employed, no Jew would buy anything from them. Acts 12 verse 25 And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. They had fulfilled their ministry, Saul and Barnabas were delivering money collected for the saints in Jerusalem. John, whose surname was Mark, this is the author of the Gospel of Mark. He would soon depart from Paul and Barnabas. Acts 13 John Mark was Barnabas' nephew. Thank you.